Hi, John Valvano here, and in this video I want to give you a brief introduction on how to run C++ on the TM4C123. Uh, now obviously this is meant for the 312H students, but really anybody who wants to run object-oriented programming on the uh, microcontroller can do it this way. All right, so uh, the first thing you're going to notice is each of the source files over here has got an extension of .cpp. And now .cpp uh, it's, is going to be the trigger for Kyle to treat it as a C++ programming. And that's really pretty much all you got to do is make all your files C++ and um, uh, in that way it will create C++. And, and again, you can still use you can still uh, interface between uh, C++ and assembly in the ARM architecture procedure call standard way, just like we did before. All right. Uh, before I get started, let me show, remind you that this is a microcontroller, and so there's not much memory. And in this particular starter file, you can see that uh, the stack size is 1,024 bytes, not much room and the heap is only 512 bytes. So don't try to put too much stuff either in the heap or on the stack, because you got a, only a total of 32 kibby bytes. All right, let me walk you through what goes on here. Uh, just like um, the regular uh, Lab 8, uh, you're going to use a sequence of programs to uh, calibrate the ADD converter, uh, to test its accuracy, um, and work through the steps just like regular um, 319K, but in the end, you're going to create an object-oriented solution uh, to the problem. And so let's begin with the class called SlidePot. And right here, the class SlidePot is the thing you're going to add to the system. So let's look in here uh, to see its definition, and let's open and start with that one. Okay, so this is the class SlidePot. Again, anything you want to do here to change the design, uh, go for it. Um, uh, the only uh, requirement is that you use a class which obviously um, uh, encapsulates the behavior of some object, and the object in this case is the SlidePot. Uh, but as long as you encapsulate it so that the functionality is all embedded in here with a sequence of variables and methods, uh, please feel free to uh, change the design. Okay, so there's a, a number of public variables, uh, the raw data, the semaphore flag, the calculated data, the calibration coefficients, etc. And then there's some public methods like uh, in uh, creating it, and you can see that uh, the um, the the uh, constructor, where'd it go? This one. The constructor here set this up with the calibration coefficients of 150 and 0. Okay. Uh, and you're going to write the A to C in it and the A to C in just like regular 319K, and you're going to use these methods to actually perform the A to D converter. Um, now, it's not part of the class because that's hardware and there's only one of them. Okay. Uh, but again, you're going to implement methods in an appropriate way. Again, feel free to uh, change the design. Um, uh, that's it in a nutshell. Basically, uh, uh, this particular lab has one class, and it's instantiated once because you have a single sensor. All right, well, enjoy this lab. We'll make another video with me running one of uh, Gagoric's uh, uh, example codes here in a moment. 